So for the longest time, this was my favorite mouse, the humble Microsoft mouse. Um, didn't even have a real name. I think it was, just, yeah, Wheel Mouse Optical. That, that was the name of this thing. And it was around forever in one form or another. In fact, I know it came with a uh, PS2 connector as well, but this is USB. And I've had a couple of iterations of this over my lifetime. And I probably used this mouse for like, I don't know, a good 10 years or something. It still works. But um, I wanted something with more buttons and maybe something just a little more ergonomic because one of the things about the wheel optical mouse that's, well, perfect for me is I'm left-handed and this is a symmetrical design. So it's good for theoretically either right or left-handed people. And it fits my hand quite well. And for the longest time, this was my go-to mouse. But it got a little long in the tooth and I wanted something with a little higher DPI and nothing supremely awesome, like nothing like hardcore gamer style, but just something a little bit better. And I tried a bunch of different mice, and eventually I settled on the Razer Death Adder Essentials, left-handed. It is a 3500 DPI mouse, and the best part for me is that it is curved for the left hand, and the buttons are on the right. Now you can get ambidextrous mice, of course, with buttons on both sides, where it's symmetrical, similar to this guy except i find that it's uncomfortable because i like to rest these two fingers on the side of the mouse and if there are two buttons there i end up pressing them and maybe you can disable them in software maybe you can't but anyway i really like this mu this this mice this mouse the problem is they stopped making it i got one of these for my basement office and the other one for my actual office which is now upstairs since i work from home and uh so this is what i'm accustomed to and i don't really want to change and you might say, okay, get one on eBay. Well, on eBay, the cheapest one I could find is a hundred bucks. A hundred bucks seems like a lot. In fact, the first time I looked, one was listed for almost 200 bucks and it was used. Right now there's one up for a hundred bucks new. That's tempting, but still kind of expensive. Razer does still make the Death Adder Essential right-handed mouse. It looks a bit different. But, and of course it's reversed, but I mean it has green instead of blue. Uh, this lights up blue here, by the way, as does the scroll wheel. But uh, in theory, my idea is that maybe they have the same components. Oh, I didn't describe what the problem is. Ha, as you can see, this thing fell apart. The thing came apart. In fact, worse yet, it didn't just fall apart. Like, it's not just that this broke off. What happened is... I dropped a hard drive directly onto the middle of this mouse. And that caused the center scroll wheel slash button to depress way too far and get stuck. And so I took a pair of pliers and attempted to just jostle it loose and bring it back out. And that's when this split and broke off. And this is still jammed in there. Like it won't turn at all. Um, and it's like kind of off to the side. It's all, it's all jacked up. So pretty sure the mechanism is broken. That's why I brought this up, because I want to take the internal components from this right-handed version and try to put it into the left-handed version, and hopefully have that work. It may, it may not. The advantage being that this costs $30 brand new instead of $100 or more. Uh, someone on Amazon is asking for over $200 for one of these, by the way, for the left-handed version, so just know. This is not going to be an exciting unboxing, so I think I'll probably fast forward through this because this is a fairly bare bones mouse. It's called an essential mouse. Hmm, interesting. Right off the bat, it's a bit different. Um, it's hard to describe, but this one actually feels a lot cheaper. And this one does have essential in the name, whereas this one doesn't. But online, I saw essential in the name for the left-handed version. So I think this is a cost-optimized version of the Death Adder, whereas this one is not. Which may be unfortunate, but I'm hoping they use the same design of scroll wheel internally. So we're going to check that out by opening both of these mice up. And one advantage... Just as a size comparison, the Death Adders are bigger, slightly bigger than the Microsoft Wheel Mouse, and I like a bigger mouse. 
I find it just fits my hand better. Uh, well, that too, but I find this kind of mouse that's bigger fits my hand better. Yeah. All right, so let me start with opening the existing left-handed one. And this has been opened before by me because I actually did a video where I swapped a couple of cables internally to reverse the left and right buttons. Ooh, this pad is kind of destroyed. That's a shame. Oh, nuts. Yeah, because this is well used. When it was brand new and I did this, these held together a lot better, but now they're worn down. Ah, so that's the whole adhesive pad. Yeah, that's all jacked up. But we'll see how it all goes back together. And then there's a hidden screw under this label, for which I've already punched a hole long, long ago. And that should be all that's needed to open this up, if I recall. Oh yeah. That looks familiar. Now unfortunately these boards are connected by this uh, ribbon cable, which is soldered on both ends, so I can't really just disconnect the cable. But I think I'm going to have to take out this board anyway, because that's what the scroll wheel is attached to, in order to access it. I will say, they did put a lot of screws in. That's, uh, that means it's fairly well made, I suppose. And also, the left and right buttons did survive the impact of a 3.5-inch hard drive that was a bit on the older side, so it was quite heavy. Uh, that was just my dumbass fumbling. Oh, they really want belt and suspenders with this. There's uh, little clips right there. I'm not sure how visible that is to you guys, but... No, that's not what's holding it in. Oh, it's side buttons. Okay, so maybe it has to come out from this side first. And it looks like it might be clipped in here in the back. Oh, this is well put together, I'll give them that. I feel like I'm doing something wrong, like there must be an easier way. First of all, let me disconnect the LED. Um, just so I don't strain that too much. And does it slide down? I mean, this is like really... Despite having six screws taken out, this is still well, well restrained. Oh, I see. There's an armature here that I think needs to pop out. This piece of plastic right along here is the but is the um, buttons themselves, or the external manifestation of the buttons. And I think this comes out completely. It's like clipped in on this end. Ah, there we go. No, no, I don't think this can come out first. I think the circuit board has to come out first. Okay. It didn't feel good, but... There's definitely something else holding it in. What? I'm being way too violent with this, and... Ah, but it liberated. Aha! Okay. So here is the scroll wheel itself which is just gonna fall right out i'm just i'm thinking the clips that hold it in place might have actually broken and if that's the case that's not good news because they're molded into this top piece so even if i could scavenge something from this it wouldn't be that because obviously the top piece is in the wrong orientation the thing is, though, there's no, like, plastic pieces that fell out, so maybe nothing did, maybe nothing snapped off. Oh, you know what did snap off? I, th I think the end of this wheel is, this, the end of this um, axle is supposed to be a bit longer in order to go into this rotary encoder here. 
because that has like a hexagonal uh, slot in it. And I think that's supposed to go into there and cause it to rotate. So that might be what's broken. So if that's, if that's what's broken, then I'm hoping that this scroll wheel might fit. So let me take this apart and see what we got. And I'm usually not even this careful, but you know what? I'll keep the screws separate. And I think that's all. Oh, no, there's one more. Uh, there should be one more longish one. No, that one's stuck in the base of the mouse. Okay. We're good. Aha. And unfortunately, the bottom design is different too, so I can't reuse the uh, pads from here. So that kind of sucks. Hmm. A little camera adjustment, but yeah. Pads are different, so... Oh, well. Let's get prying. Um... I mean, it's kind of a waste. This is a $30 mouse, which isn't exactly cheap. I mean, not, you know, expensive. You can get much more expensive mice, but I kind of hate to ruin this, but it's still better than spending 100 bucks on a brand new, oof, left-handed dealy. Oh, crap. Wow. I'm, well, I don't know. I don't really care if I manhandle this because, well, I'm never going to use it. Now, is the screw under here? I think I feel a hole there. I don't think it's under this pad. I think it's sort of in the same place it is in the other mouse, maybe. You know, the funny thing is, like, when you take off these um, mouse foot pads or whatever you call them, even if the glue gets a little fucked up like this, um, you usually can just stick it right back on there. Like, with the uh, original left-handed mouse that I took apart uh, previously. Not, the, I mean, I took it apart just now as well. But I had taken apart previously and just stuck those feet back on there without using any extra glue or anything. And it stayed good for a couple of years. And in fact, it was still kind of hard to remove today. So, wow. Okay, completely different construction internally. As opposed to... Uh, so it's still got the LED on the front, which is not detachable. Is that not a connector? No, that is a connector. It's just a different type of connector. Oh, fuck. Well, I just pulled the wire out of the connector, so... You know what? I can always solder that back later if I feel like it, which I won't. Um, besides, I don't, I don't really need my mouse to light up, but just by comparison, so this is a single board affair. And it's got the side buttons there, the left and right buttons there and there, and then the scroll wheel interfacing with this rotary encoder type dealie. Which is a similar arrangement, although this has an extra little circuit board coming up, sort of inside of the wheel. Is that like a Hall effect sensor? Does, does this have, have magnets inside? But one thing is for sure, that circuit board is held on with an incredibly, incredibly tiny screw. I'm not even sure if you can see it on camera because it's like black on black. But... It will require this incredibly tiny screwdriver. And there we go. Incredibly tiny screw. Okay, because this definitely is going to need to come out to get the wheel out. Oh, I think that's just LEDs. Oh, that's just to light the wheel up. Okay, on this one, the LED to light the wheel up is here and just kind of points at the wheel. Which I guess makes sense because it's a different material. Uh, this needs to be lit from within. But okay. Um, now I want to remove this one without breaking it. And it's definitely, like, it's definitely a part of the shaft that goes into the rotary encoder. Or potentiometer, whatever that is. Um, and I don't want to break that off again, so I need to figure out how to gently pull it out of there, which seems easier said than done. This rotary encoder assembly is like soldered on. So from a manufacturing standpoint, they'd solder onto the board and then have to put the wheel on. So surely there's a way to maneuver the wheel out without messing that up. I mean, I'm afraid to just pry it up because that might just break off the uh, spindle axle. I don't know, whatever it's called, in the same way. And by the way, when you press the wheel, the uh, switch that actuates is below this side of the axle. 
like it's pressing down onto there. Hopefully that comes across. Ah, okay. All I did was push it very hard to the right. Now, I don't know if this is going to be the same size. Uh, but you can see, like, this definitely has that little peg on the end, that little, like, extra thin spot which interfaces with the rotary encoder, and that's what broke off of here. So, let's see. Get this donor mouse out of the way. And see if I can get this wheel back in here and hope this rotary encoder has the same size hole, which it may not. Oh, oh it's actuating it. It's spinning the rotary encoder. I can feel it vibrating. And the axle is hitting the button on that side. This is surprisingly a flimsy mechanism, but uh, I think that might be fixed. I just let's just hope that the the uh, wheel clears the exterior. That's the new one. Clears like this slot. And while I have this out, let me clean that a little bit because it's a bit gunked up. Now, I know some of you watching this are probably really fastidious about keeping your devices clean and such. This is just a little uh, IPA and, well, obviously a paper towel. Um, I am not one of those people. My philosophy is, like, I could give this a really good cleaning right now, and it might look practically brand new. But in a month, it's not going to look practically brand new anymore. I know that. And so it's like... Why bother? Like I said, that's just my philosophy. I'm not saying you're wrong if you have a different philosophy. And if you like to keep your stuff clean constantly, you know, and you're always going in there and, uh, I don't know, washing your mouse or whatever it is people do. So now I got to get the circuit board back in, which was a bit of a faff in the first place. So my apologies. Okay, well, let me get the actual USB cable out of the way. My apologies if this isn't very photogenic, but I want to try to maneuver this in more politely than last time than I took it than when I took it out. Now I don't know if it's not going in because the scroll wheel. No, it's actually it's seated on this end because there are these two clips here and here. Let me brighten up this image a little bit, maybe. So it's under these two clips, which seems to me to indicate the scroll wheel fits. I just want to make sure that's not fouling anything up. It looks like it should fit in there, though. Um, oh, it just sort of clicked into place. The circuit board is seated right now, where it should be. Does the wheel work? The wheel does not work. Shit. Why does the wheel not work? Is it, did it come out of position when I put the circuit board in? Damn, because it's like, it's operating perfectly when it's not in the case. I mean, it's rotating, but with a bit of friction. The problem is, I can't, like, press it. It's, it won't move up and down. So I'm thinking the geometry of this wheel might be just a little bit different than the old wheel. I think it's offset just a little bit to the side. and It won't budge from that position. Hmm. Damn, this may be a bust. Because it'll scroll, but it won't click. Because it's definitely actuating the rotary encoder. Oh, well that... Hmm. Well, that's an obvious reason. Yeah, I didn't really pay attention to that. This shaft is a much larger diameter than that shaft. Shit. Shit. So that's why I won't move up and down. I can't really, like, machine this shaft down to a smaller diameter because it's hollow. I mean, I could cut the shaft off of here. Will it fit inside of there? No, and I was thinking, like, maybe epoxy it. But the problem is it probably, it won't be perfectly concentric. So it'll wobble. And that might, if it's not perfect, it, as the wheel scrolls, if this is off at an angle, it might press the button just as the wheel turns, which is not ideal. 
but my temptation is to cut off. Yeah, but it's also going to undergo a lot of stress, a lot of lateral stress, and that... I mean, both these are hollow, so I could put something inside of them. Well, the other way to approach it is the other end, where it interfaces with the encoder. And if only I could get a little extension on this wheel. I could try 3D printing a wheel, but the tolerances on that interface, the rotary encoder, would be insane. I'm going to pause while I consider this problem. I think I may have come up with a solution. The diameter of this nail is very similar to the outer diameter of this axle, or this shaft. I don't know. I don't know what the nomenclature is on mice design. It will also just barely stuff itself into there, probably deforming the plastic in the process. Now, the good thing is this is hollow much farther down than where it would need to be cut off to get the shaft thickness. So I would need to cut it off around here. Uh, let me demonstrate with the nail. Cut it off right about here, then jam the nail in there. And I, either before or after jamming the nail in there, cut the nail to length to match this shaft spindle. I don't know. So I think I'm going to try that. That may be stupid, but hey, um, I guess I could Dremel it, or, you know, just live dangerously. I mean, this is some tough plastic. I'll give him credit for that. And then hopefully I scored it enough. No. Eh. YOLO. Yeah, that's fine. This may seem very half-assed, but that's probably because it is. Now we just got to press the nail into there. I can't really press down on that because I don't want to break off the end of that shaft. So, But I do need to get the nail in there. So just brute force. Now one could say maybe some epoxy or something, but this is really such a tight friction fit. I mean, it's not coming out, it's not wobbling, so I think that's just about perfect. And then I just need to cut it to the right length. I wonder how much leeway I have with this. Like, well, I guess I could just do this, because that should come out to just the end of that wheel. So if I stop fumbling around and I line that up, and then I just score the nail. Obviously, this knife's not going to cut through a freaking steel nail. But that will leave what I hope will be a visible mark for me to cut with a proper tool. All right, so I dremeled it off camera uh, just because I didn't want uh, metal dust flying around over here. And uh, yeah, so just use a cutoff wheel and... Uh, there's the nail. So let's see if this even remotely works. Just get that in there. It's the right length to press the button. That's good. And now let's see if I can get it mated into here comfortably. Okay, circuit board is set in position. I think it's working. Like, I feel it. Mm, it's not perfect. Oh, no, it is. Oh, my God, it's clicking. And it's, and it's rotating smoothly. Holy shit. Very smoothly and... Um, there's so much noise in the basement. I don't think you're going to... I'm going to put the microphone... In my head. Oh God. Okay, well let me see if I can do this so you can see where the microphone is. Oh, I don't know if that's even audible, but I think that 
I think that may have done the trick. All right, well, I'll, I'll put it back together and uh, test it out. Obviously, the reassembly is just going to be the reverse of the disassembly. Okay, before I put the feet back on, I'm just going to test this thing out. Looks like all the buttons are working as far as like clicking goes. So yeah, I'm just going to grab a random laptop and uh, plug this in and see if it uh, mouses. Yay, random uh, ThinkPad carbon blah 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 off the shelf. Let me see. There we go. We got a nice enough shot of that. All right, and let me actually I'm going to plug it in on this side because I'm a lefty and I don't want the USB cable in my way. It detected it, setting up a new device. I mean, there's no reason it shouldn't detect it. It's uh, mousing. Um, it may be hard for you to tell, but like I'm obviously um, moving windows around and stuff. But now the PS to the resistance. Middle click, middle click, open a new Chrome window. I know uh, this is kind of abysmal, like the screen's not really that bright compared to the lighting in here, but it should prove the point. So like if I go to Amazon, uh, I Googled Amazon, but usually it auto completes on my computers, but this is like a laptop I don't use all the time. And just for your sake, I will, oh, I forgot, now I have a scroll wheel. Let me control zoom. Hey, scrolling. <laughs> and uh, scrolling down. Yep. Brilliant. And like I said, I can uh, middle click because if I middle click on the Chrome, the icon on the taskbar, it opens up a new instance of Chrome. Holy shit. Wow. I am extremely pleased with this. It feels, uh, it feels fine. It feels like a mouse should. Well, hooray. Now I just got to get these feet back on and um, back in business. Yep, and the side buttons work. I think they default to like forward and backwards in browsers. I don't know. I guess it's kind of useful. So yeah, all the buttons work. Yeehaw! The lighting's going to be a little weird because this was side lit, which like I said, it worked better with this translucent ring which actually looks quite yellow now um and you can see the logos on so that still works and yeah you, you really can't see too much in the way of lighting there but that that's okay i'm not too mad about it you can see like a, a little bit of a glow along the sides of the wheel but i'm not really concerned with the aesthetics i'm more concerned with the uh actual feel and functionality and the ergonomics of it and as long as these foot pads kind of go on okay um yeah it'll be great so let me get this out of the way uh, just throw it on the floor which is where laptops should go now the feet are gonna be the awful part because i really just generally screwed this up like hard so this one was on this side, as I recall. And now worse yet, I'm getting like fingerprints all inside of there too. Um, and then this one is all gunked up, as you can see. Was on this side, oriented like so. And this I'm just going to put on as best as freaking possible. Uh, let me get a flathead screwdriver just to sort of push this around. I mean, there's not too much of an art to this. Because what I find is, as long as you get it all kind of lined up, it's still sticky enough. And then just like, as you're using the mouse, you're pressing down on it. And it's like, it causes it to reseat in the adhesive to reactivate. And it usually works pretty well, but this one is really jacked up just because this got really thin, I think, from so many years of use. I do believe, though, 
I mean, it feels okay. Yeah, I'll see where it goes. I'm pretty sure you can buy, like, generic um, material like this with adhesive and cut it to suit your needs to replace the uh, feet of mice. I was really hoping that this uh, cheap Death Adder Essential right-handed version would have the same foot pads, but uh, yeah, totally different. I mean, it's my own stupidity because I could have just looked at product photos and seen that it was obviously different, but hey, I really just wanted the wheel, and with some slight modification, like shoving a nail right into it, uh, the wheel now works, and this is a completely functional mouse yet again. So, success! I really didn't think it would be a success when I started opening this thing up and realized how different it was internally. But uh, some trials and tribulations kind of ruined this. I mean, I can resolder the LED connectors. Um, I can obviously put the feet back on. I mean, this can still be a functional mouse. It just won't have a scroll wheel, but it'll still be, uh, you know, two regular buttons with a side button. Uh, yeah, so I'll probably put it back together. And just keep it as like a spare, you know, just if I need a mouse on some desktop that I'm setting up for someone else and it's just like out in the living room or whatever. It's always good to have extra mice, but uh, yeah, for now, I don't give a shit. This is what I care about and it works. So anyway, thank you for joining me on this. I was going to say adventure, but it wasn't really an adventure. Um... Of limited use, I would say, because, I mean, how many people out there really love this mouse and want to restore this to functionality, uh, specifically, rather than getting a another mouse? I don't know. Um, my second-ish favorite mouse, which I have right here, this one's really old. It's a Steel Series Sensei. Um, Steel Series Sensei Raw rubber surface. The rubber surface was a bit of a mistake because you can see this is kind of like shitted up and that's not just because it's dirty that's just because like this kind of rubber over time deteriorates and just sort of becomes like see like you can scrape bits off of it. It's not ideal. It is comfortable in the hand and it's a little bit smaller than oh my god than the, what's it called the razor and the razor is also taller um yeah, it's hard to see at this angle, and I don't really have a good camera angle for that. Uh, eh, eh, so many cameras. Um, yeah, so the Razer is definitely, it's not just perspective, it's definitely taller than the Steel Series, and feels better in my hand. Uh, the uh, Razer feels better in my hand, I should say, because this is also an ambidextrous mouse um, with side buttons on both sides. But, I would say second favorite if you're looking for a mouse that's slightly on the larger side. Um, the Steel Series Sensei is a decent option. I just also like the uh, tactile nature of these buttons. A little lighter press than the uh, than the Steel Series. Anyway, I'm kind of babbling now. Like I said, thank you for coming along on this non-adventure. And uh, yeah. Um, if any of you do have a like new in box ish type mouse of a left handed razor death adder, or you have advice on a similar mouse that's strictly speaking left handed, um, I'd love to hear about it and or buy it from you at a reasonable price. Like I would say, I would pay like 50 bucks for one of these new in box. A um, hundred is a little ridiculous. I know mice do sell for $100 or more regularly, but usually they have more buttons and more features. And um, yeah, 100 bucks for this, which is fairly basic mouse, is a little bit of a ripoff. Uh, 50 bucks though, I'd go for it. So, um, 